Hello and welcome to Knitting Traditions. My name is Inga and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about knitting mostly. Today is a special stash episode. We're going to go through all of my summer yarns and um, to be honest with you, it's going to be a long one. I appear to have more than I thought. Um, I think every summer I feel inspired by all the summer knits and I've been stacking up on summer yarns, but 80% of the year I don't knit with summer yarns and I don't wear summer yarns. A lot of my summer knits I don't actually use, even though they're beautiful because of the climate that I live in. But I do want to get better um, and I do want to use up <laughs> some of these gorgeous yarns that I have here. And they don't all necessarily have to be t-shirts, but I do find that of all of the summer things that I have made, t-shirts are what I gravitate towards and not tank tops and other items. So today uh, I have I've written down some pattern ideas that I want to have in the back of my mind, so I thought we could start with those. And then I'm just going to go through all of the plant-based yarns that I have, because that's what I consider summer yarns. Um, some are mixed content, but mostly plant fibers. And if you like seeing yarn, stick around. It might be too much, and that's fine. I'll be coming out with podcasts um, regularly as well. This is just like some little bonus content um, as a thank you to those who support me on Ko-Fi and to those of you who follow me here on YouTube. I am forever grateful for having you here with me on this journey. So I thought I would share with my yarn obsession um, with you guys. So let's um, get started. So I scrolled through Ravelry um, for tees because t-shirts are what I think I want to make more of and I have sorted the items into fingering, sport, DK and worsted. These are terms that refer to a certain thickness and weight of yarn which usually can be used for a similar kind of gauge and they usually have a similar amount of meterage per let's say 100 grams but some DK yarn might be closer to a fingering weight and would work better for those patterns and some might be closer to a worsted and might work better for those patterns so what I usually do is if I substitute yarns I look for something that has a similar uh, composition like if it's twisted or single ply if it's chained or not um, that it's approximately the same amount of meters to the original yarn used. However, keep in mind that plant fibers are usually heavier than wool. So, um, yeah, you can usually get more meters in a wool yarn in 50 grams that has the same thickness as a cotton yarn with the same thickness of 50 grams because cotton is heavier so it really comes with experience but if they kind of look the same and the meter is kind of the same and it's the same kind of fiber content then usually it's okay to substitute yarns and I don't think for any of the patterns I've listed I'm going to use the original yarns except maybe one so it's fun to play around it's fun to have a stash to to shop from, which is how I view my little big stash, my own personal store of inspiration. So uh, keep in mind that even though they are listed under fingering, some of them might be bordering on DK, some are more light fingering. Um, I think I've written down the gauge recommended for these different patterns and I will try to put everything below in the description box, at least the names of the patterns that I suggest. So for fingering weight tees, the ones that stuck out to me in like the first 60 pages of Ravelry when I search for tee patterns, um, I've written on quite a few. I think out of all the yarn weights, 
fingering weight is my go-to for summer patterns because summer patterns for me are for the really warm days. If it's not really warm, I will use wool. So fingering weight is my preferred weight of yarn for, for summer patterns. So I think I have the most here. There's also a lot of DK patterns, but fingering, my favorite. So the first one that I have written down is the Outline T by Jessie Mae Designs. Uh, the Outline T ha uses um, dropped stitches and I have not made the Outline T, but I think I made the Outline Tank. So it's the strappy version of it. Now I don't use it that much just because I don't gravitate towards um, sleeveless tops. I prefer to cover Prefer, ideally, I prefer to cover this much of my upper arms. It's just an insecurity that I have. We all have our own insecurities, and that's one of mine. So the outline T I would like to make. Um, it looks really beautiful, and I think it would look really nice with some silky content summer yarn. And that has a gauge of 22 stitches. Another T is the Moonset Tea by Ozetta. Ozetta has a lot of patterns on my list here. I have not made any of her patterns yet, but I really do like her aesthetic and I want to make lots of her patterns. So the Moonset Tea is a V-neck constructed tea. It's been quite popular on the um, YouTube podcast knitters. Uh, radar. I've seen several people making the Moonset tea, and I'm influenced, so there's that. And that one has a 26 stitch gauge, so it uses probably quite a thin fingering, uh, light fingering weight yarn, I would think, based on the gauge. Um, and I would really like to make it. And I think I would also like to make it in a light basic color. So let's see if I have something in my stash. The Everyday Attitude is a t-shirt by Suzanne Summer. And I had not seen this one before. This is a striped t-shirt. I have, I think, two or three more striped t-shirts on my list. But this one has a 20-stitch gauge and is it recommends a fingering weight yarn. So I think it could be a lot of fun to play around with stripes and you can then combine colors, which is really nice. The Umbria Summer Top is a top that I have seen on Instagram before. It's by Cookie the Knitter. And this one has a collar and it's a 24 stitch gauge. It just looks like a really nice, light, airy tee. Um, I do like the look of it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like knitting it because of the collar. Um, no. Sometimes I'm a bit lazy, but it does look really nice. The Cloudberry Tea by Fiber Tails. This one I do have already, and I have the yarn for it, which is my most recent purchase, which I will show you after I go through my list. But Fiber Tails is another beautiful podcaster on YouTube. I really enjoy her content. And I've made several of her patterns before, but her Cloudberry Tea is one of her few more summery patterns, and I've wanted to knit it for quite some time. It's a 23-stitch gauge. And uh, the Marigold Tea was also new to me. It's by Winter's Weather Knits, and it's a 22-stitch gauge. I'm really interested to see if I get around to knitting this pattern, how it's constructed. Um, it looks really pretty. Another pattern by Ozetta is the Air T of 26 stitch gauge again. So lighter fingering weight. It just looks really beautiful and like a very nice staple basic t-shirt. And it has like little longer sleeves, which I really like. Ozetta also has the Harvest T which is a 28 stitch gauge. So even a tighter gauge or thinner yarn for that one. And then I have the Blockus by Susie Howman. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. That one's a 24 stitch gauge. Um, you have the top phone, 
Cohen by Nano Lily Design. Not sure if I'm saying that right either. That's also a 24 stitch gauge. Then the Gauzy Tee by Amy Gunderson with the 21 stitch gauge. Looks like a really nice and flowy t-shirt for the hot summer days. And then the last fingering weight that I've written down is the Exuvia by Han Rimmen. And this one is a 25 stitch gauge. So for the sport weight, I only have four tees written down. I feel like sport weight is like a, just a thick fingering light DK. It's like right in between there. Uh, the poppy tee, which is a new t-shirt by Petite Knit, I put on this list, but I didn't write down the gauge for that one. Sorry. Um, I think she used a cashmere yarn for her version. I would definitely use a more plant-based um, combination for a summer tee. The Road Tripper Tee by Ozetta, 24 stitch gauge. So it's kind of fingering weight, like sport weight fingering weight. Um, the Lantana Tee by Joanna Roman. I'm so sorry for all the names that I might be butchering today. That one is a 21 stitch gauge, so it's closer to a DK, I would say. Marley Julie Hoover. No, Marley by Julie Hoover. It's a 23 stitch gauge T. I hope this is not boring me just listing up a lot of patterns, but I thought it's, I like to see a lot of inspiration and I think it's going to be nice to have in the back of my mind as I'm going through all these plant fiber yarns that I have. For the DK weights, there's lots of beautiful t-shirts. I I've written down a few. So there's the Tolsta Tea by Rebecca Klo. So another beautiful podcaster who I follow and um, she released the Tolsta Tea and that one has a lot of options for modifications you can do that her testers did. So there's lots of beautiful different versions. So you can make a lot of different teas with one pattern, which I really like. That one is the 17 stitch gauge. The Colette Tee by Vitra Design is a t-shirt that I have made before and I made it in 100% cotton and I really really liked the way it looks on. It has a very flattering fit I think. Um, I think it's made with negative ease as well but I just I really like the the neckline shoulder detail on that t-shirt. It's quite simple but interesting um, but I didn't like the yarn that I chose for it. Um, the woven in ends kept like popping out. So I think now I weave in my cotton ends and then I also tie a little knot to the back of a stitch to make sure it doesn't unravel. So if I do make it again with 100% cotton, I would do that to make sure the ends don't stick out and kind of destroy the whole look. Uh, Faye Summertop by Irene Lynn. I have this in my pattern library and I really want to make it. It's beautiful. I just haven't had the mindset to start it because it's all over lace. There's a lot going on and you know, I need to be mentally prepared and I'm not, but I really want it. And she has, I think all of her designs are stunning. You should really check her out. Irene Lynn, so many beautiful things so much mind power required though so <laughs> I'll get around to that it's 21 stitches I have the Riley T by Rachel Kurihara another designer with beautiful designs that one has a 20 stitch gauge I also have the Skagen T by Vitra which was new to me I haven't seen that one before that is a 20 stitch gauge and it uses Lena and I do have Lena in my stash. So I might actually make that one. I have some black Lena that I could use. Then there's the Farnham Tee by the Knit Pearl Girl. That one, I have wanted to make the Farnham sweater as well, but I might make the Farnham Tee. I haven't decided. Um, 
the front end tee has a 20 stitch gauge. Uh, then I have a colorwork tee on here from Irene Lynn, which is called the Liana Sweater. But based on the gauge, I would not say it's a DK because the gauge is 26 stitches. So I would put that more in the fingering weight um, column. Uh, the Fier by Lucienne Tricote, 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 I don't know, is 18 stitch gauge. And the last one on the list is the Ginevra T 2.0 by Fable Knitwear. And that one is a 16 stitch gauge. I only have two worsted weight patterns. One of them is a worsted weight. The other one might call it a DK. So the actual worsted weights that I've written down is the Cali Crop Top by Gorilla Knits, which has a 16 stitch gauge. I think it looks really cute. Um, it's going to be a quick knit with a 16 stitch gauge. Yeah, I like it. The other one is the Abidas Top by Lily Kate France. And I really like the look of that. Um, it's a 21 stitch gauge. That's why I don't think I would call it a worsted weight. I would call it a DK weight. That pattern combines two different kinds of yarn though. So it might be because of the the needle size required to get the, the lace weight yarn to get the same gauge as the other one. It's called worsted because of the needle size. I don't know, but it's a beautiful top. Anyways, so those are the pattern ideas and now we're going to get into all of the yarn so if you're just here for pattern ideas i will see you soon and if you like to look at all the yarn this one is for you so i don't even know where i know where to start honestly there's just so much i think i will start with the oldest yarn in my stash because that's what's closest to me on the floor so I have some yarn art jeans yarn in the color 82 this is some yarn that I bought when I lived in Poland this is probably six or seven years old stash and I don't I think I bought it to make a sweater, but then I realized that I don't enjoy knitting with cotton and this one is very, mm, I don't know. I don't like the feeling of it that much. It's 55% cotton and 45% pack, which I don't know what is. But yeah, I do have a sweater's quantity of this yarn. And I really do like the color, but I don't know if I'm going to enjoy knitting with it. So I might gift this at some point, or maybe I will make some kitchen towels or something, or maybe at some point I will feel ready to sell away some of my stash. But for now, it's going into a box. So I think I have eight. Yeah, I have eight balls of this yarn art jeans yarn. Then I'm going to take it out of the plastic. This is some yarn that I bought in Turkey. So my parents have a summer house in Turkey and fiber is more affordable there, but there's a lot of acrylics and there's lots of cottons. So I've stocked up on some cotton yarns when I was there. This is Kartopu and I think it's 100% cotton. No, it's 85% cotton and 15% polyester. And I have five in this colorway which is 2114S. And again, I think for this yarn, I bought it to make some dishcloths or some stuff like that, but I just haven't gotten around to it. 
so that is one. I also got this more gray color, if you will. This is color K1001. And I do think it's the exact same content. If it will show me. No, this one is 100% cotton. So I think, yeah, it's not the exact same then. This one is 100% cotton and this one is a cotton mix. And I thought, I thought they both were 100% cotton, but it doesn't matter. So one more taupey, one more light silvery gray color. And of course I could, I could make a top. It doesn't have to be dishcloths, but that is kind of what I had envisioned for it. And I also got it in the green. And this one should also be 100% cotton, the Kartopu Love Cotton. And all of these cotton yarns are made in Turkey. Oh, I have one more color, but this one I have actually used one of the balls for. I think I used it for a crochet project. This is again the 100% cotton, and this one is in more of a beige color, K855. So I now have four left of this yarn. I live on the west coast of Norway, about three and a half hours north of Bergen, which is the second largest city, and then three and a half hours-ish south of Bergen is Sannesgarn, the mill, and I have gone to the mill several times and stocked up on like mill scraps that they sell quite cheap. And this is a bag of Mandarin Petite, which is a cotton yarn from them. And I have made already some, um, not dishcloths, but like the bigger towels for the kitchen. And I have quite a bit left. So this could become a cotton top or maybe some gift knits haven't quite decided but I don't think I'm gonna put that in there because these are not like full nice skeins they're a little bit more scrappy so I'm gonna find a different system for these ones I also have these mill scrap ends from Sanders Garn which is the tin lina and if you hold tin lina double it works as the regular lina from Sanders Garn so there are several patterns that can be used for this I've actually made this before in Tin Lina. This is the Cumulus Tea by Petite Knit and then I used a single strand of the Tin Lina knit on three millimeter needles. Um, but I don't... I like the Lina and the Tin Lina once it's knitted up but if you wash it it kind of stiffens up a bit and even like washing it with softener, fabric softener and such hasn't really helped prevent that. So I don't enjoy wearing it as much after that. So I don't know if I'll be making another top in this or not. Just my personal observation. Uh, some more unpacked yarn from Turkey is the Oxford Eco Cotton Baby. And I bought this last year. This is 100% cotton. This is quite a thin yarn. This is probably like a light fingering weight yarn. Ooh, this could be nice for the Ozetta's Moonset tea. Or the Air tea. Note to self, note to self. I definitely have plenty of it. I think I have like 10 balls of it. And I think, I thought I got it in more colors. Yeah. I have, I also have it in this light gray, which would also be really nice for those patterns. But this one is opened up and it, it doesn't feel super soft. It feels very cottony. Um, it's, does it have more information? 
it's 200 meters per 50 grams so it is a fingering weight by definition 100 grams 400 meters that's like spot on fingering weight but remember cotton is heavier than wool so a strand of this usually next to a strand of fingering weight 100% wool this will be thinner yes so I need to collect all of these gray ones and stack them I apparently also bought it in dark brown which is a really pretty dark brown which would also look really nice in a tea I need more hours in a day but I don't know how many I got of the dark brown I have 10 white and 10 gray so let's see how many brown I have okay I think I have six of the brown which should probably be enough for for a t-shirt I think now I also have four of these a lot of this I bought last summer of the things that I'm showing you now in Turkey I had a little splurge in summer yarns oh that's not the same there we go four of these this is the Alize Bella it's 100% cotton again um, this one feels a little bit softer to touch than the eco baby eco cotton baby uh it's 360 meters per 100 grams so it's like slightly thicker but from the look of it i would say this is a very typical fingering weight yarn i have four of it should be perfect for a t-shirt's quantity so i might just make that i also got a lot of this episode is going to be spent reaching on the ground Four of this beautiful, like, orangey yellow sunflower color. This is the same base, the Elise Bella. Oh, let's see if I can hold it up for you. The Elise Bella, 100% cotton, it's Ecotech cert certified, and it's gonna be a nice summer color, summer yarn got four in like a creamy creamy white and same base Elise Bella 100% cotton and they don't say the color ways this is color one this is color 83 and this is color 89 so yes Oh, it turns out I got five of the, the cream. I got some Gazal Organic Baby Cotton. I think last summer I was on a hunt for all the 100% cotton yarns I could find in Turkey. This is 115 meters per 50 grams. So this is, I would call this a DK weight. And I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight balls of this should be enough I think for one of the DK weight patterns that I have noted down not sure which one um, but it's 100% organic cotton it feels okay I prefer a bamboo cotton blend to knit with the way it feels but I think this one is going to be a nice option for one of the DK weight t-shirts I lied I had 10 of it so I had a bit more and then I have the Gazal organic baby cotton a bit of a different uh, label but I think it's the same yarn it's the same meterage the same content same brand 100% organic cotton so I think they just went for a more fancy label for this one and I have three four five and a little bit of a six one which apparently I have made something with this yarn but I can't remember what and let's see I think I also have it in black yeah so I have 
Oh, I know what I, I'm. I'm wait. Wait. I am working on a pillowcase cover using this yarn, the black, and this one. How could I forget? It's a whip, a lingering whip, for the summer. So I have three left of the black, and still quite a bit left of, of like the greenish, beige. So I'm gonna put this so that I can see it because I do think I need to um, open up some more of these to finish the pillowcase. I might just put it on my lap instead of dropping low every time. Let's see. This yarn I used to make the Look at My Holes by uh, James N. Watts last year. And I really liked that. That was a lot of fun to wear. It's, you know, very see-through, so I wore it over bikinis, but I thought it was really fun. Um, this yarn is a bit splitty, though, so I'm not sure if I will use it again, but I did really like how how it was on once knitted up. And I do have one left of this, so this could be put into another item as, like, something striped or something. It's 50% um, cotton. No, it's not. It's 50% viscose and 50% linen. I think I found out last year because it's not written in English. And I also have four, three or four, in this color. And the brand, I forgot to say, the, bl br bl <laughs> the brand is Lino Lanoso. Lino Lanoso, come on shining up a little bit and there's some language I don't understand on here but yes I have four I have four of this so let's just see if I can put it somewhere visible and yet hide it a little bit in my box because I also have four of this green color which is, I really like this green. <laughs> it's a bottle green, maybe you could call it. Oh, I lied. I have two, two left of this. So I only used two to make the look of my holes. I'm not sure how much I would need of this to, to make like a proper t-shirt. Do I only have three? No, I have four. So I have four of the bottle green, four of the mossy green, and two left of the purple. This is not easy to kind of squeeze in there because it's wrapped around cardboard, so it's quite dense. I also have it in black. And I have more of the black. I think I have six of the black. So maybe the black would be a good option for for a t-shirt because I have more of it. And it's 175 meters to 50 grams. So per meter wise, it's like a DK. But look wise it's a fingering weight so I would treat this as a fingering weight if I were to knit with it because it's quite thin looking um, yes so six of that one and I might just need to stop organizing in this bag of yarn maybe I can still squeeze in a little bit more because I do have this yarn as well. This is the Linos, the 100% linen, and it's 160 meters per 100 grams. And I can already feel that knitting with this is not going to be pleasant on my hands. It's 100% Italian yarn. It's yeah, 160 meters per 100 grams. So that would make it 
like a thicker weight yarn but looking at it I would say heavy I would say sport weight looking at this it's 100% linen and I have three of it so I don't have that much meterage but I do think I could make something summary out of this I just need to figure out what mm. I have one skein left over in here from this tea actually which is the Viking Garn Bambino, which is 50% cotton and 50% bamboo. Really enjoy knitting with this, really enjoy wearing it, and it holds up really well after washing. Still super soft. Would be great for baby knits. So maybe I'll put this aside for some project like that. Throw it on the floor. Now we're getting into like a little bit more messy ends. So this is the DK cotton that I used for my Colette tea previously. I got this at the Sunnis Garden Mill. It was very affordable. I did not like knitting with it and I did not like how it worked in the garments because it kind of, but I don't think that's the yarn's fault. I think that was the way that I wove in the end. So I do have enough here to make another tea. I'll just make sure that I weave in the ends better and it will stiffen, I find. So maybe I will make something not negative ease with this yarn to make it a bit more comfortable. I'll have to see. I have not quite decided I think I will keep this in this box and I will start sorting in here instead because the other box is quite full. It's a smaller box. And I found one more of the Gazal cottons. Next, I did buy some yarn online on sale. I think in the fall. After knitting this, I really wanted <laughs> to make more so I got some more bambino yarn three four five six I have six in this color and I really like it and I want to make a tea with it not sure which one the viking garn bambino is 176 meters to 50 grams so like fingering to DK sport weight eh. It's hard to tell with the, with the plant yarns, really. But yes, I do have these four. And I think I will squeeze them into this other box. Now, I did buy on my last purchase a different kind of brand's cotton bamboo, which is very similar in feel and colorways. So I wonder if the companies might actually be making the yarn in the same factory and they're both sold in Norway which is strange but I, I will show you when I get around to the pile over there and I also got six of this right here which is a different color but the same base and everything this is color 434 and this was color 452 so what is left in here now is some yarn that I think I have already cast on. I have three balls of this yarn and I just ripped my needle out. That's how slippery the yarn is. Oh no. Or did I just make a swatch? I made a swatch. That's what I did. I made a tiny little swatch with this fabric or this yarn. And this yarn, I have knit with it before. Let's see, let's take out the label. Come on. This is a Felici Punto exclusive silk linen spun. And it's 75% silk and 25% linen. It's a beautiful yarn. The colorway is stunning and I need to find a project that will do it justice. 
I just have not decided what that project is going to be yet. I think I'm going to take this out of here and put this yarn more on display because it's more fancy summer yarn. And I do have the swatch and I have knit this swatch on 3.5 millimeter needles. I do little garter bumps, it's hard to see, um, to let me know what needle I have used. I could do yarn overs and I do that sometimes, but that also increases the amount of stitches and then I would have to knit two together to kind of keep the shape of the swatch. So sometimes, or mostly, I just do some purl stitches to let me know what gauge and needle size to get the gauge is. So I have three full skeins of this yarn. This is like a fingering weight and I will find a different system for this yarn. I do, um, one of the reasons I did this today is I want to get my cotton and plant yarns out of the closet and in front of me so I get some inspiration for some summer knitting. If not, it's just a stash that's going to keep growing. And here I have some little leftovers. So I'm going to put those into my leftover basket. This is that one cotton yarn that I had somewhere in here. I'll find, I'll find a way. And here is another cast on, which is the, is the beginnings of another cumulus tea that I am doing in the tin lina, thinking I would make a dress. But based on how the fabric has held up after washing, I don't think I want to be knitting a whole dress on three millimeter needles and light fingering weight yarn only to have a dress that feels stiff and wrinkly. So, might just frog this. Might just frog that, yeah. Okay, so now we have almost an empty, almost an empty box of yarn. Just that little bit of black cotton in here. So now I can put other stuff in this basket. Let's see. And here we have the organized one that I will keep out and about until I have some new cast-ons. Give them justice. Oh, we need a little break to drink. Okay, next batch. <laughs> this is probably one of my all-time favorite yarns that I have knit up. I made the ranunculus using this yarn. This is the Papyrus by Fibra Natura. And I bought it originally in Turkey because it's produced there, but they no longer sell to their own country, but they sell it to Norway. So I found this particular one here in Norway and I bought six balls of it. It's a mix of cotton and silk. So it's 78% cotton and 22% silk. It's 120 meters to 50 grams. So this works as a DK, I would say. It's beautiful to knit with and the fabric it creates is also so nice to wear. It's really soft. Um, so I highly recommend. I also bought some light gray that I made the, is it the Ripa tea last year? but I don't like how it looks on, so I might rip that back at some point in my life and repurpose the yarn. Um, so yeah, these will become something special. I really like the ranunculus that I have in the same color, <laughs> but I'm gonna make something different with this, this one. I just need to find the right one. So I'm gonna put this in here more yarn that I got at the outlet mill from Sunniskarn. This color, so it doesn't say what yarn this is. It's It cost um, 10 kroners. I think it's Mandarin Petite, which I have in brown and I have in beige. And apparently I also have it in this 
greenish muddy brown more green um so i think i'll put this together with the other uh, mandarin petite that i have and just figure out what i want to make with it and have it all together somehow on the floor and then this is the lena that i have in black i also got this at the mill i have six balls of this and it was also quite affordable it was like one dollar fifty cents probably per per ball of yarn um and like i said i have two patterns written down by vitre which is a norwegian designer and she has a lot of beautiful summer tops um and a lot of them uses lina so i might just make this into one of those so my last purchase that i made is some cotton bamboo mix from a brand that i hadn't heard of before and i got several several colorways um this is the cotton bamboo light by merinor and it's 50 50 cotton and bamboo and if you look at it up close next to the one from viking garn Can you see the difference? Hundred and seventy six meters per fifty grams, hundred and seventy six meters per fifty grams, both three millimeter needles, both fifty fifty cotton bamboo, color four three four, color four three four, color four three four. What's up with that? So Viking Garn. And Marinor has the exact same yarn. So I guess I have more than five. I could combine them. But yes, I got five of this. And I think I got a bit more of this light one because I want to make two t-shirts. This is the color 402. Like a warm white and then I got this light green just blowing out a bit um, 432 and this one which again looks quite similar no same color names has to be the same producer or mill whatever you would call it uh, both very affordable yarns. Feels really nice to knit with. So what I was thinking, and I also have, I have one of this, because what I was thinking is I want to make the Cloudberry Tea, that's the name of it, by Fiber Tails. And I was thinking I would use the base color in this and then the little embroidered or knit, I don't know if it's how that she makes the little flowers on the side. I could make um, in these colors or these colors. I, don't, I haven't decided. Um, so that's like one option. And then I could make another one in green and do these colors in the embroidery. So many opportunities. And I know that I like this yarn especially now that I know it's the same yarn. I know I like knitting with it and I know I like wearing it and it holds up really beautiful and it's very affordable. So if you can get your hands on some 50-50 cotton bamboo, I highly recommend. So that was my most recent purchase. I also do have four cones of summer fibers um, that I have in my stash that I'll show you. These are cones that I bought in Italy last year. And this is a linen cotton blend called Naturale by Filati. This is lace weight. Um, so I might hold it double to knit with, or I might actually use this for weaving. I haven't quite decided. And I have another one as well. Um, I thought, 
I should write inside what these things are, but I do think I have a photo somewhere in my photo library of, of the exact content because I don't think these are the same. I think one is more cotton and one is more linen. But yeah, I was thinking of maybe using these for, for weaving. But maybe that's a bad idea since they're lace weight. Like, if you're a weaver, let me know. So I'm going to put this in there. And I also got these two. Actually, I have more. I have two more, but I'm using those for a project, a long-term whip from, from last summer. But I might pick out again. And again... I have not written down the content of this. I think it's a cotton viscose blend. I think both of these are some cotton viscose blends. Some beautiful colors. And I'll get the two that are in a whip. So this is a pattern by um, James and Watts that I'm working on. And it's I need to look at the pattern again. I think it's like this. <laughs> I think. And I'm supposed to do... Or is it like this? I think it's like this. And then I'm supposed to change colors now and do this side. And then I have to do it again for the back. And I'm using this cone right here. And I'm pairing it with some other yarn that they had in the store which they're not this engaged, so I'm planning on changing needle sizes. This is 42% cotton and 58% viscose. I think this might be more cotton than viscose, but I, I don't remember exactly. So that is a whip that I think I will pick back up again. Yes. Are you still with me? Oh, you brave souls. Because I still have one more box to go. Now, the box that I have is an organized box that I've had for a while. But it's been kind of in my cabinet on top and I haven't gotten any inspiration from it. So that's why I'm thinking of, you know, taking everything out and leaving it out and about. So I have this box of summery fibers as well. Let's see. So I have some Lina in here, it appears. I have more than I thought, but I don't think they are the same colorways. No, they're not. So let's see what I have. These are the same. Excuse me while I figure out my life. Hmm. Okay. So, I have Lena in the color 1015. And I need to figure out how many I have. Because, apparently, you know, I have both the one that I bought in the store and the one that I bought in the outlet. And the dye lots are quite different. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but this is a lot more yellow, dark. But I have for sure three that I have bought in the store. I'll put that together with the black one, I think. And then I have from the outlet at least five of the same color, just different dye lots. That in here as well. Somewhere. Everything is collapsing on itself. And I also have some tin Lena and Lena in the same colorway. The tin Lena I have these five ones. I've used the Lena for a t shirt last year. Um, but the Tin Lena, 
I probably just stocked up because I like the color and forgot I had it. So I have five of that. That would look really nice. Again, don't like how it is after it's been washed up. Might need to do some more research and maybe it's just user default. Um, but yes, put that in there. And then I have some white Tinlina that I have two of because I used this for another one of the Cumulus Teas. So I think these are leftovers from that one project. So, you know, somehow try and organize my life in these boxes. Belina, squeeze that in somewhere as well. And then I have these two skeins that I bought in Turkey maybe three years ago. This is some Italian yarn though. It's uh, a Trofil designed in Italy, Rustic is what it's called. And this is 50% organic cotton and 50% organic wool. Um, again, not, if I had three skeins, definitely would have been able to make a t-shirt. I think I can get a t-shirt out of two because it is 400 meters per 100 grams and I have 200 grams here. So I'll have to have a look at my finger weight patterns and see how much yarn they require. Or I, I could make a tank, I just prefer t-shirts. So we'll have a look and see. I also got some, oh, I can, I can barely touch this. It's giving me like fingers down a chalkboard feeling touching this yarn. So it's, which is why I'm not sure I'll ever be able to knit with this. My, I might wash it first and see if it's, it gets like, I can't even, oh, and see if it gets any better. This is from Pearl Soho, the Burnish, which is 100% rayon from bamboo. And it's, the, the feeling is just, uh oh, no, I can't. I can't even touch it. Sorry. It's just, I, I'm very touch sensitive to certain things and I think I will have to wash this up and see if I can touch it then. Because right now the feeling is just giving me the uh, feelings. No, but uh, the color is beautiful and um, it's, 339 yards per 100 grams recommended gauge is 23 to 28 stitches so it would work well for a lot of the patterns i just need to do something with it so it doesn't feel when you touch it you know what i mean oh no i have three i have three of the rustic so definitely can make a t-shirt with this one it'll be a nice springy summery color Hey, I lied. I have more cones. Apparently, I have a cotton cone. Um, where is this from? I don't know. How can I forget where a cone came from? Could it be? Because it doesn't have a tag in here. Hmm. Nope, no clue. But yeah, I have a cone apparently. It feels like cotton. Feels like cotton. And I have more of the papyrus. This must be leftovers from when I made my ranunculus because it really doesn't take that much yarn to make. So I'll put it with the other that I have. There's a slight difference in the dye lots, but not huge. So let's see this slot 6535. Yeah, it's not the same dye lot, but it's the same color. So maybe I can still make it work somehow. 
it's more yellow for sure when I'm looking at at the color now. Hey, so much. We're, we're getting close. We're getting close to the end. Um, this concept merino, it's the concept cotton merino, extra fine, is some yarn that I got a long time ago. I think it was one of the first test knits I ever did. I got this yarn in gray and in this color. And then I remember really struggling with the gauge of that test knit and the sweater came out way too big um i just don't understand how because my gauge was right anyway beautiful sweater but i'm not gonna talk more about it because there was something weird about that one but i did also get it in green so it would be really nice to make that pattern again sometime for me but i would probably do a different gauge so that it would actually fit me um, I gifted the gray one, so I don't have it anymore, and I don't remember the pattern name or the designer. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I loved knitting with the yarn, but the fabric it created afterwards was really nice. So I have enough of this green to oh, come on to make a sweater. Um, four, six, eight. I have eight balls of it concept cotton merino it's the color 122 and it's 70 percent cotton and 30 percent wool it's 105 meters to 50 grams it's like a dk worsen worsen maybe um yes i have this beautiful yarn that was gifted to me this is the Yarn Bee Spinesse in the mustard color. And I have two balls of this. And this feels so nice to the touch. Like, I'm going to be honest about how I feel. If I feel something's icky, I will say it. And if I feel something soft, I will say it. And this feels really nice and soft. This is the color mustard. Um, 350 yards. And does it say... It's 75% viscose and 25% polyester. I think this um, might be a really nice baby knit because it's so soft and I have two balls of it. So maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, squeeze it in somewhere. And then I have, oh, I had one more of the concept. I have this soft silk by BC Garn. I made the the no frill sweater using this yarn held together with silk mohair years ago that I gifted to my grandmother. Uh, this is 100% silk. Um, I found that it did stiffen up a bit after wash. Um, it helped holding it with a silk mohair to feel softer when knitting with it. I have 350 meters of this left. Not sure exactly what I'll make with it, but I'll figure it out as one does. Just squeeze it in. Then I have some pure lino from Dalligarn. This is 85% ecological recycled linen rayon and 50% premium natural linen it's 120 meters by 50 grams and this one feels a bit in my hands so it's not something that i look forward to knitting with uh, i have six of it i think i got it quite cheap it's kind of falling apart um which is something very slick plant fiber yarns tend to do sometimes because it doesn't stick on itself but yes I have enough for a top the color is beautiful I think the garment will be really nice but I don't know if I'll enjoy knitting with the yarn so we'll see I will squeeze it into my box of yarns for now 
try and squeeze everything in so that I can still see everything. At least like one skein of it popping up to kind of show me what's in there. I have one of these, Lena. Lena by Sunday's Garn again. This is leftovers from the Seaborn tea that I made two years ago. Really, really like that t-shirt. I want to make another one. So I have one of these left over from that. Let's squeeze it in with the other Lena. This is Mandarin Petite. I'm going to put it with the other Mandarin Petite. Um, I have this Gala Mixed Fiber that I got in Turkey. And I've used this already to make some like baby toys that I've given away and I have a bit left still essentially four balls of this left so I'll see if I can't squeeze that into the other box somehow I have a scrap of falling apart um, papyrus from Fibra Natura that I used for a bag that I knitted probably five or six years ago. But this could be a nice little striped contrast for, for the what I have left. So I will keep it with the other Fibra Natura. This, I think I got this cotton yarn in the UK. This is Rowan Summer Light DK. And I got this to crochet something for a little baby Yoda that I made with my friend. <laughs> so I have a bit of left of this one. No idea what I'll make with it, but I'll squeeze it into the box. Then I have some alpaca silk. I have three leftovers from some previous project. I think I made a cardigan holding this with a drop silk mohair. But I'm going to take this out of the summery box because alpaca, not summery for me, too warm. And what I have left is some yarn that I got in Japan. It's the Parade Festive Summer Blend, which is a hand dyed yarn that I bought at the Walnut um, store in Tokyo. And I have no idea what I'm gonna make with this. I got several different colors. And I think the idea I had was to make a shawl. Oops, sorry. But if I look at this, these are really not my colors um so i don't i don't i think i just really wanted to have some nice souvenirs um but this is not my kind of pink it's not bright enough it's not my kind of blue it's not my kind of gray gy beige these are more cool tones i mean they're beautiful and i would really like to make something with them but i'm not sure exactly what it would be and I only have one of each color, so maybe a gift or something. It's 60% wool, 20% cotton, 10% silk, and 10% linen. And it's um, a fingering weight yarn. And I mean, it's beautiful yarn, so it will have to become something. I just need to figure out what that something is. So yes, I'm going to also find a system for this in here. That was it. 
that was all of the summer yarns that I own and it's plenty but now it's all you know visible so I'm gonna keep them out and about and see if I don't get some inspiration to cast on something for the summer before fall is here and I revert back to all my woolly wools so if you enjoy this content please subscribe and give a thumbs up uh, if there's any like go-to summer yarns for you please share below and if there's some patterns that's your like number one favorite summer knits um, to wear please share that as well I'm always looking for inspiration thank you for staying with me this long if you have and I will see you soon bye